I'm pumped and excited to be with you again today to share with you my secret mysterious recipe that a lot of you are asking me. How do you mix your spring feeding solution to feed your bees to prompt them to lay more brood getting ready for a spring honey flow? Today I'm going to show you all the ingredients that I've gathered up and we're going to mix them together. Plus we're going to feed it to this little hive here, this poor little hive, still hanging on by its skin of its teeth. And I may even open it up today, not only to feed them, but let's pull out a few frames and see if there is a queen in there, see if she's laying. But first, let's get started. I'll show you how you do it. So I'm starting with a two quart glass jar, small mouth lid. I like the small mouth for some reason. And then I have sugar. Uh, this container doesn't have anything in it, but uh, just regular granulated sugar. So I'm gonna add my sugar here. And once I get the sugar added, I'm gonna show you the other ingredients that I add to help this become what it needs to be for the bees to get the most uh, nutritious bite for the buck for that spring feed. Here it is. We have honey bee healthy. And so in this case for two quarts, I like to use about two teaspoons, but you can, you don't have to use that much, but certainly you can go uh, one teaspoon per quart or two teaspoons for two quarts. So let's just measure it out here. Uh, this is one teaspoon. See, it doesn't take much at all, does it? Here's my second teaspoon. All right, and we're gonna do the same for the Amino B Booster. If you're not familiar with this, it's a form of uh, protein as well. So again, we can use two teaspoons of that. Amino B Booster, I'll leave links in the description below. Once we have that measured out, let's go for our protein powder. Uh, we already have a B in there, but we'll work around the B. It takes about one teaspoon, one teaspoon per quart so about two teaspoons is really all we need. All right, so that's all that I mix. Man, it is windy today. That's what I mix for my both fall and spring feeding. And so again, if you saw my video yesterday, you saw how I was feeding this to prompt my bees to have more foragers in the spring. And I'll leave a link at the end of this video so you can watch that video if you didn't get a chance to see it. Okay, so we're gonna mix it up really good. I have hot water from my sink in the house, so whatever temperature that is, not boiling. Some people feel like they have to boil it. I don't really think you have to boil it. Now be careful where you set your spoon down because the bees are gonna to wanna to be in that. They're gonna be in these uh, jars here, so we have to be careful to put lids on that. You can see them flying around. I make my own lids with the little holes in them, so we'll put that on there, and then I have my Burns feeding board behind me. We have a lot of these available online right now, both 10 frame and eight frame. That's pretty exciting. Now let's go ahead and light up the smoker so we can put everything on this little hive. And it's also, we wanna take a look at this little hive to see how it's going. One of the things I feel like a lot of you uh, have told me you really appreciated in a past video was I explained to you how to properly use the smoker. A lot of these smokers come with this little piece of steel on the bottom, but unfortunately the legs are folded like this and it's usually upside down. So you have trouble getting your smoker going. This is a grate that holds your smoker fuel up off the bottom. And so remember, you gotta bend these out like this and by bending them up, now it's gonna hold the smoker fuel, your paper, your pine needles, whatever you're using, it's gonna hold it up from where the air goes in and burn better. It's a lot of mistakes people make right there. So you wanna put that in, but make sure it falls so that the legs are down. This is really good for new beginners because I know a lot of you will have a lot of struggles trying to keep your smoker going or get it lit. I take a little bit of paper and I just light the paper first on a windy day <laughs> and get it burning. And then once my paper burns my fingers, then I take burlap. I'll leave a link in the description of where I buy this food grade burlap. For bees, it's really, I think, really safe. You don't have to worry about it having any toxic chemicals in it. Barely put that burlap in there and then get it burning. Ignite your smoker fuel with that first bit of paper that you have down below there. And what we're gonna do next is uh, take this lid off. We're gonna take a look uh, at the bees, see how they're doing, and then we're gonna put a feeder on them. Hey guys, I'm gonna speak, be speaking in Nevada at the state conference here next weekend. I'm looking forward to that. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna be speaking in Kankakee, Illinois in March. So I've got other speaking engagements throughout the year, but those are the two that are coming up 
if you're in those areas, check those out. Now in this video, I'm gonna be announcing the winner of my giveaway course worth $289. So stay tuned, you might be the winner. Now you guys have noticed I've been feeding my bees some pollen powder out in the fields and my bees have been enjoying it. And I know some of you have asked me questions, uh, won't that cause my bees to have too many bees or start raising too much brood too early in the year? Remember, I've done this for years. I need a lot of bees. I live in central Illinois, out on the plains. It can get sometimes 20 below zero chill factor. And I need a lot of heater bees out there. And so it doesn't bother me at all to have a lot of bees in my hive. I would rather my bees be too populated coming out of winter than just coming out with a small amount of bees. In the old days before I kind of started this uh, technique, I'd come out of winter with 10,000 bees, like a size of a package then they were really weak and I couldn't really make splits or nucleuses that I wanted. So now I'm trying to raise bees so I can sell nukes and I can raise queens. I can have a lot of bees to make splits. So for me, it pays to have way too many bees coming out of winter. But let's take a look at this little uh, hive here. Those of you that have followed all my videos, appreciate that. You have seen me working this small little hive and how it got started. For those of you that are just jumping in for the first time, thank you so much for watching my channel, and I appreciate it. This small little hive here came out kind of by accident. A lot of us as beekeepers, we make mistakes or we do things that aren't really according to the books or what we should be doing. I just put a, this queen was up here. She wasn't doing very well in the hive over there. So I just moved her into this super, and rather than kill her, I thought I'd just give her a chance to see what she would do over here and boy, they're still hanging on. Today it's warm enough for us to pull some frames out. I don't recommend this for a new beginner or somebody that uh, only has one hive and because what can happen, I can accidentally kill the queen by smashing her during the inspection. And in February, there's no way I'm gonna get a queen and this hive is toast. But I'm gonna try to be as careful as I can and try to take a look. Now what you see here is candy for my winter bee kind that I'm feeding them. They're eating it, they're under it. You can see they're just gnawing away at it. But what we're gonna do for the next few days is feed them some liquid feed with the mixture that I just showed you. Some protein powder, um, we've got some honey bee healthy, some amino B in there. And so this is gonna give them a little of a protein boost. I'm gonna tell you a secret that you may not have heard before. Don't go anywhere. I'm gonna whisper it to you in just a minute. And when you hear me say it, you're gonna be amazed at how I discovered the importance of feeding bees some protein in their liquid, all right? So here we have a little bit of bees working down here and look what they're doing. They're uh, putting some of the pollen that they're collecting out there in these frames. A lot of you ask me, oh my gosh, if you feed bees pollen, won't it just crowd them? Won't it just fill up too much? And eh, they're using it for food and they're not really packing away too much as we we see, but this would be a good inspection to see, you know, how much of the protein that they're going and getting are they actually putting in the hive and is it crowding out the hive, uh, taking up too much room for the queen to lay eggs if there is a queen in here. Now this colony has a lot of bees in it. There's more bees in here than it seemed like there were when I moved them over here, but that may not be the case. It doesn't hurt to pull up frames like this unless it has some brood on it, and then you can actually kill brood by pulling it up into temperatures that are too cold. So you have to be careful about that. But if you do it quickly, and don't hold it up in the, in the cooler weather too long, since there's bees on it, it's probably gonna be just fine. Everybody's rooting, it's like, David, I gotta keep watching this video all the way to the end because I wanna know that poor little hive is, doesn't have anything at all going for it. Dang, look at this. I see cat brood right here. I want you to please subscribe as we continue to look at this hive. Please subscribe, click on the bell, give me a thumbs up. You guys helped my last video go crazy on the internet. So you're helping me get my videos out every time you leave a comment, you subscribe and you click on the thumbs up. I appreciate it. Let's get back in that hive. Oh my gosh. But again, she wasn't a real good brood layer, but you know, in winter like this, that ain't bad. Oh yeah, more brood on this side. Here's a brood underneath here. A lot of you are new beginners. You're wondering what brood looks like. This is capped over brood as you see here where my finger is. And it's not a bad laying pattern actually for, for this time of the year at all. 
I'm kind of excited about that. All right, do you want me to tell you what the secret is about feeding bees, both in the spring and in the fall? Listen to this, okay? Bees are, are out there gathering nectar in the spring, being, bringing all this pollen back in, right? All this, they're bringing in nectar, they're bringing in pollen. Ooh, look at that. They're storing some cool protein uh, pollen powder, and there's some more brood in the center. Looking for the queen, of course. So when bees go out and gather nectar, they bring in pollen as well on their back legs, on their baskets. I've been showing you guys their pollen baskets up close pictures, right, in previous videos. And what they do when they consume and store the nectar in their honey tank, honey crop, they, they bring some nectar back in their honey crop, but it has pollen grains in it. Their proventriculus brings some pollen grains from their honey crop into the next gut, and that gut allows them to have energy and, and to store more of the food they're consuming. The first honey crop, the first tank there, the, that crop doesn't have any uh, available linings that allow any energy to penetrate the linings of, of the honey crop. So it's just a storage tank to bring nectar back. So I realized that everything bees consume, they really consume through a straw, their proboscis. That's the big secret right there. Now people say bees have mandibles. There's the queen. Yeah, there she is right there. See her? She's not a bad looking. She's a darker color queen at the tip of my finger. Yep, there she is. Okay, no need to look any further. Let's put her safely back in there. And so everything a bee eats, they eat through their proboscis, which means to me that when they gather nectar, that nectar has the protein already in it. When bees consume nectar, they are also consuming the protein that they need, the minerals, vitamins, the good stuff that they also need besides just sugary nectar. They're receiving it by ingesting the nectar that already has the pollen grains in it. And they do that through their proboscis by sucking up all of this great stuff. So I decided, wow, I might just feed my bees with a mixture of sugar water that has protein in it. This would be good for my bees. So that's why I started feeding them one-to-one -one sugar water. And that way I can actually add some of these other ingredients to it. And it actually sort of looks like, tastes like, seems like, and it, it's actually more like the real nectar that they're getting in the field. Real nectar has more protein in the liquid they consume. So rather than me trying to work hard to figure out a way to get um, pollen patties on here, I just decided to feed my bees some protein in the sugar water itself. Now, I won't mention his name. He did his own little personal study. He works for a university. And he told me that he actually colored, put some colored dye in some pollen patties and fed them to bees and then took a black light a few days later out to the hives and noticed that a lot of the pollen patties, which looked like they were being consumed, were just being kicked outside the hive. The bees were just carrying it outdoors. But when they, when they eat sugar water that has protein in it, like I've just shown you here, then in that case, they're not getting rid of it. They're actually consuming it. So which is better, a protein patty, a, a pollen patty, or sugar water with it in there? Well, for me, it wins because I want to feed them something they're going to eat. I'm, I'm putting vital, nutritious things in their sugar water. When they consume it, it will go into their second gut. If they're just going to take pollen patties and eat some of it and put and carry a lot of it outside, I'm, I'm losing. So let's get our jar. Here it is. We're going to put it right in the center above where the bees are, right here. And it quits dripping once the vacuum grabs a hold of it. And we're going to set it right here above the bees. Here's secret number two. Secret number two is when bees, bees are like humans. When we eat, we get hot. So when we feed bees and they start consuming food, they can actually have a better chance at making more heat. They make heat with their muscle in the thorax and they can use this muscle to generate heat. Just like we might get hot when we work out or our leg muscles are running and working and our leg muscles have a lot of heat to them. And so bees make heat with their muscle. 
that operates their wings and their legs. And that heat is what is going to help this little small colony make it uh, through the winter. So aren't you excited, everybody? Woo! The little hive is doing good. The queen has somehow miraculously started laying some eggs and got some brood, winter brood going on. They're out there foraging. I saw some coming in the front with some protein powder just now, flying in with some protein powder. Cool stuff. And uh, it shows what you can do if you keep healthy bees and if you feed them and if you just take care of them, you can keep a little tiny hive like this uh, alive in the worst kind of cold weather. Some of you have already said you've lost some bees because of cold snaps and uh, you kind of don't know why, but keeping mite levels down and feeding bees, getting a good queen in there, which we weren't sure about this one, but they've done really well. So that's pretty impressive for just a few frames of bees overwintering like this. Now we're going to get some things and put on top of those holes to keep the heat in there. So what I'm going to use to keep uh, heat from coming up through those holes is just some shop rags. Fold them up a few times. That'll keep the heat from uh, just running up out of those holes that I'm not using on this feeding system. Oh yeah, very good. Let's put a top on it. So the winner of my ultimate class, all seven of my online classes, is Woods Wonder. Congratulations, you won. So please send an email to my staff, longlanehoneybees at gmail.com. Let them know that you won. They'll get these classes sent right out to you. You can see I'm already kind of drinking some of the sugar water on the screen there. Mm -hmm.